Welcome to Across the Goal Line. I am your host, the Encyclopedia of Sports, Luke Austin. Be sure to go subscribe uh, and follow Across the Goal Line on all social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and here on YouTube. College football week four predictions on the way, but before I do, I'll recap last week, week 13, last weekend uh, of the regular season, as week 14 will start the conference championship games. And then the college football playoff uh, rankings were released uh, Tuesday night uh, at 7 o'clock there on ESPN, Tuesday the 28th, uh, the second day of hunting season here in central Pennsylvania, or across the state of Pennsylvania, I should say. Um, and uh, they were, 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 were released last night, excuse me. Um, I'll, uh, I'll announce, uh, I'll go through the rankings and tell you who, who's in the final uh, college football playoff rankings before we get into the conference championship uh, games this upcoming weekend, as I said, and then this upcoming Sunday, December 3rd, uh, the college football playoff rankings will be released for the final time uh, this season as bowl games then will be uh, scheduled uh, for teams who are bowl eligible. Uh, so great games this weekend, uh, probably the best weekend I can remember four conference championships in quite some time so um, I'll also before I forget I will also give an update uh, on the uh, coaching carousel across college football uh, as some teams have made new hires uh, after firing or uh, their uh, old coach leaving to go to a new school so I'll get into those here uh, as well I'm going to recap week 13 here right now, though. 12-8 uh, and eight last week, uh, bringing my overall record on the year to 130-74. and 74 Games uh, this past weekend were on Thanksgiving, Black Friday, and on the 25th of November, 2017. Ole Miss defeated uh, Mississippi State and Dan Mullen in Dan Mullen's last game as the Mississippi State Bulldog head coach last Thursday night on Thanksgiving. Uh, in the Egg Bowl, 31-28. I'll get into Dan Mullen and Mississippi State here in a minute. Uh, Pitt defeated Miami, Florida in a upset uh, in Pittsburgh uh, on Black Friday, Friday afternoon, 24-14. Houston also defeated Navy by that same score, 24-14. Central Florida defeated South Florida uh, in the game of the week, I thought. The best game of the week, 49-42 as... Uh, Central Florida returned a kickoff with less than two minutes to go to uh, seal the victory for the Knights over the Bulls. Iowa blew out Nebraska on the road in Lincoln in what was Mike Riley's last game as the Nebraska Cornhusker head coach, 56-14. Texas Tech, surprisingly, I thought, defeated Texas 27-23. Virginia Tech then defeated Virginia 10-0 in the Battle of the Commonwealth. Uh, Florida State defeated Florida uh, in the first game on Saturday, 38-22. Uh, Georgia uh, won the Peach State rivalry between Georgia and Georgia Tech, 38-7. Louisville won uh, uh, against Kentucky, 44-17. Ohio State defeated Michigan in the game, 31-20. Auburn defeated Alabama, 26-14 in the Iron Bowl. I'll get to both of those teams uh towards the end of the show here probably um, again as I will uh, be talking about coaching coaching carousel uh, rumors you know if you by the way if you didn't go check out uh, or listen to the video that I put out about the coaching carousel about my predictions uh, go do that as of now it's somewhat uh, off dated it's with with Dan Mullen you know, going to Florida, and like I said, I'll get to that here in a minute. Um, and I'll talk about the college football playoff rankings, so just just stick with me. Uh, Auburn defeated Alabama, as I said, 26-14. Wisconsin defeated Minnesota, 31-0. Uh, Fresno State defeated Boise State, 28-17. Those two teams will meet again this upcoming weekend in a rematch uh, in the Mountain West Conference Championship. Oklahoma defeated West Virginia at home, 59-31. Oregon won the Civil War between Oregon and Oregon State, 69-10. LSU defeated Texas A&M in Kevin Sullivan's last game as Aggies head coach, 45-21. Clemson won uh, against South Carolina, 34-10. to 
Stanford defeated Notre Dame at home 38 to 10. I know that score is wrong, 38 to 20. Um, it's 38 20, not 38 to 10. Washington defeated Washington State then in the final game I picked last week, 41 14. Biggest upset um, Ole Miss over Mississippi State, just for the fact Ole Miss was down this year. Pitt also, for the same reason, over Miami, Florida, uh, as the Hurricanes, though, were ranked second in the country uh, during this game. They are now seventh. So I said I'll get to the cultural play of rankings here in a bit. And then a lot of people will say Auburn over Alabama just because Alabama's Alabama. Well, that's why they play the games, folks. Alabama's not going to win every single game. So um, best game, South Florida, South Florida. Central Florida returned that uh, kickoff after South Florida tied the game after they were down 8, 42, 34. Scored, went for two, kicked off to Central Florida, returned the kick then uh, for the touchdown, and uh, won the game, 49-42, as I said. Impressed Central Florida for that reason. Penn State, they put up 66 uh, against Maryland. I know they're playing Maryland, who finished 4-8, and eight, but they put up 66 points. Now offensive coordinator, former offensive coordinator for the Penn State Nittany Lions, Joe Moorhead, is now the head coach at Mississippi State. As I said, I'll get to that here in a minute. Uh, Auburn, also impressed, disappointed. Alabama, uh, you know, just because, I mean, the past couple weeks they really – they had a close call against Mississippi State there. They, they, uh, in my opinion, should have lost that game, but they didn't. They hung on, uh, and now their time has finally come. They lost the game uh, for the first time in the regular season in almost two years, a little over two years. Um, so Auburn, Central Florida, and Penn State impressed. Uh, Alabama disappointed. Uh, college football playoff rankings now. I will uh, go through. Uh, I'll go backwards. I'll go 25-1. to 1. Uh, 25 is Fresno State, finishing at 9-3. and three. Play Boise State again this uh, upcoming weekend in a rematch. NC State is 24th. Mississippi State is 23rd. 22, Virginia Tech, 21, Northwestern. Memphis is 20. 19 is Oklahoma State. Washington State is 18. LSU, 17. Michigan State, 16. Notre Dame dropped to 15 after losing to Stanford on the road. Central Florida rose to 14 after defeating South Florida uh, in the battle on I-4. Washington is uh, 13. Stanford's 12. TCU's 11. And then the top 10, USC's 10. Penn State's 9. Ohio State is 8. Miami, Florida is 7 now after losing to Pitt, dropping 5 spots from uh, the second spot. Georgia is six. Alabama's five, dropping four spots from number one after losing to Auburn. Wisconsin finally cracks the top four as an undefeated team uh, at 12 0. We'll be playing Ohio State this upcoming weekend for the Big Ten title. Oklahoma's three, Auburn's two, and Clemson's one. Uh, so I, I, I waited uh, this week uh, until the college football playoff rankings came out to, to record. Um, just because I knew there was going to be a lot of shakeup, I really didn't know how they um, were going to be. I had thought potentially Auburn would have been one due to the fact they've beaten two number one teams when they played them uh, in three weeks. They're at two, though. So uh, as long as they win the SEC title, they'll be in the playoff, I think. Uh, but I'll get to um, my playoff predictions here at the end of the show. So I'm going to um, that's what I said, just stick with me. Um, i trying to do this as fast as I can because i got to record uh, for the NFL as well and, you know, go through and edit everything and um, <clears throat> get the video out to you guys. So, um, coaching carousel update. Uh, UCLA, as I said uh, in that video I put out, it was early Sunday morning. Um, they hired Chip Kelly. So Chip Kelly is the new uh, head coach at UCLA. Dan Mullen, as I predicted, took the Florida job. So Dan Mullen is now at Florida. He's obviously out at Mississippi State because he took the Florida job. They had to go out and get somebody. They hired Joe Moorhead, uh, who I had thought could have been an option for the Florida job as well if Mullen had said no. He's coming home now. So 
uh, Mississippi State goes after Joe Moorhead. He will be uh, introduced Thursday morning down there in Starkville, Stark Vegas, Moore Cowbell. He should do uh, a good job with the Bulldogs, I think. Uh, he's been a head coach before, as I've previously stated, at Fordham, 38-13 and 13 record, uh, before becoming Penn State's offensive coordinator before the start of the 2016 season. Um, so he knows he knows what he has to do. He knows uh, who he has to hire to be successful. Uh, and Dan Mullins left behind a pretty damn good team. He was in Starkville for nine years, uh, going to a bowl game, I believe, in eight of those nine years, if I'm not mistaken. might have been all nine. Uh, as he's going to another bowl game this year, obviously uh, will not be coaching that. Uh, coaching that game, as will... Joe Moorhead won't be either. Um, whoever their interim uh, is at the moment will be coaching, but Joe Moorhead is getting getting off to a uh, fast start uh, with his new program. Ole Miss, they fired Hugh Freeze. Well, he resigned back in July. Matt Luke was the interim all season. They decided to promote him as the full-time head coach instead of going out and hiring somebody. So Matt Luke uh, is now the full-time uh, head coach for Ole Miss, uh, Texas A&M. They did fire Kevin Sumlin. I did not have that in that uh, coaching video I put out the other day, um, due to the fact he wasn't fired yet. But I did have it in there that if he did get fired, they should go after Chad Morris from SMU and an alum. But that's still open. Supposedly they're going after Jimbo Fisher, current head coach uh, at Florida State. I don't know why he'd want to leave Florida State. Um, you know he's 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 done uh, really well for himself in Tallahassee. He has won a national championship uh, since taking over for Bobby Bowden. So I don't think that that is hanging over his shoulder still. That oh he's just he's still coaching Bobby Bowden's team, folks. He's been there how long? Bowden's been retired for almost a little over or close to ten years. So. Um, I, I don't I don't really see I don't know why Jimbo Fisher would leave other than the money other than the money I don't see him leaving Tallahassee if he does leave Willie Taggart maybe it might be a name to watch out for he had ties uh, to the Florida job uh, they did not hire him they obviously decided to hire Dan Mullen I think Taggart will stay I think I talked about it in that coaching video or had it in my notes at least maybe I didn't talk about it he's in Oregon now um former South Florida coach, so we'll see. Maybe Charlie Strong to Florida State if Jimbo leaves current, currently at, uh, at South Florida. Maybe Scott Frost to Florida State if he uh, if Nebraska wants to go a uh, different way. Um, and he'll leave Central Florida to go to Florida State. I don't think that'll happen. I think Nebraska is still pursuing Scott Frost. I know they have a game this upcoming weekend, and their athletic director, Nebraska's athletic director Bill Moose has said, you know, he's trying to he's trying to hold back and you know give give him some room as to the fact he has a game playing for a conference championship game, uh, conference championship this upcoming weekend against Memphis in a rematch down there in Orlando. So I think after that game, though, I think I think you know speaking of Nebraska and Scott Frost, Scott Frost will be the next head coach at Nebraska. So A and M still has an open job. Uh, Nebraska has an open job. I think they'll go after. I think A and M really needs to go after uh, uh, Chad Morris. He's done one hell of a job at SMU as a first-time head coach. Scott Frost done one hell of a job as first-time head coach as well at Central Florida. I think he needs to go home to go to Nebraska. Tennessee, they fired Butch Jones a couple weeks ago. Um, they wanted to go after Greg Schiano. Ended up backing out of that deal uh, after. Uh, fans and boosters after some backlash uh, after um, they found out that he was an assistant at Penn State when Jerry Sandusky was still uh, the defensive coordinator uh, under Joe Paterno and then we all know how the Penn State scandal uh, went I'm not going to get into that uh, it's been you know six years I think everybody needs to drop it um, as Sean o, you know he, he, he's a good he's a good coach at Rutgers, uh, not so much in the NFL with the Buccaneers. He's currently the defense coordinator with Ohio State. 
uh, Tennessee wanted to go after him. They obviously backed out, as I said. They then went after Mike Gundy, uh, who they went after back in 2012 before hiring Butch Jones. Uh, they gave Gundy, this time around, a six-year, $42 million deal. Gundy turned it down. He's staying with Oklahoma State, staying with his alma mater, played quarterback there. Uh, so who knows what Tennessee is going to do. Maybe go after Lane Kiffin again. Uh, T. Martin, maybe, former quarterback. Uh, maybe Bobby Petrino at Louisville. Uh, you know, we'll have to see. There's, there's a lot of guys out there at the moment that they could go after. Uh I think whoever they do hire will probably be fired in another couple couple years anyway. So um, Tennessee just really – they really haven't been able to – it seems like they get back on track, but then the next year they're down, and that's what happened this year. Because two years ago, last year, 2016, they were good. And and then uh, and then this past year they were, they were god-awful, and that's what led to uh, – the firing of Butch Jones, so you know John Gruden's name is still out there. I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't think they'll go after him. As I said in that um, other video, they should go after Mike Norvell, Mike Norvell at Memphis, Arkansas could also go after Norvell. Uh, they still don't have a head coach uh, after firing Brett Bielema last Friday night after, right after the game, and uh, you know they could go after Norvell as I said. They could go after Bobby Petrino again. I don't think they, you know, will. We'll see. Um, Gus Malzahn, uh, you know, Auburn head coach, has ties to Arkansas, was a former coordinator there. He just beat Alabama, though. He's on the verge of going to the playoff and potentially playing for the national championship this year. I don't think Malzahn stays anywhere. I think Auburn locks him up for, for a long time. Brian Harson's the name. I really, really think Arkansas should go after current Boise State head coach. I know he's got a game this weekend, so maybe that's why a couple of these schools are, you know, trying to uh, trying to hold out as long as they can. Mike Leach, maybe another guy for Arkansas or Tennessee, uh, current uh, Washington State head coach Mike Leach, maybe to Nebraska if they can't get Scott Frost. I think that Scott Frost deal is set in stone now. I think it's done. They're just waiting for him to play this game then he won't coach in the bowl game but we'll see um brian harson arkansas though i think needs to happen and then surprisingly as i said uh, in that coaching video i i thought you know a big time hire was going to happen some guy leaving from big name school to go to another big time school you know what happened where big name fire and this is somewhat a big name fire uh, todd graham's out at arizona state fired him after six years uh, he bounced around there, went to Tulsa. Uh, he still well, he started in Tulsa. Went to Pitt, and I think he went back to Tulsa. Uh, and then he's at Arizona State now. And uh, or no, he was at Rice, excuse me. And then he was at Tulsa, and they went to Pitt, and then he left Pitt after one year. And that's when Pitt was. Uh, uh, they couldn't really keep their head coach after they fired Dave Wanstead, and then they they. Uh, they had Paul Chris there for a little bit, and now they have Pat Narduzzi. But uh, Arizona State's looking for a guy. Reports are Herm Edwards. Yes, Herm Edwards, current uh, ESPN analyst since 2009, former uh, uh, New York Jet and Kansas City Chiefs head coach, is uh, going supposedly, reportedly going to be the next head coach for the Sun Devils. We'll see. Uh, he was going to interview for that job this upcoming weekend, but I guess they got that deal uh, or that interview already done and the deal done uh, as I just got a notification a little bit ago that uh, uh, Herm Edwards uh, will reportedly be the next head football coach at Arizona State so we'll we'll see about that. He's never been a college coach, college head coach before he's been an assistant before in the college game for about a year or two but that was it uh, the rest of his time has been spent uh, in the National Football League uh, he he did well with the Jets, and he did well with the Chiefs for about a year, and then after that it went all downhill, which lost him his job. Um, and then he hasn't coached since. He's Like I said, he's worked for ESPN since 2009, so I was surprised Herm Edwards um, is, uh, is going to potentially be the new uh, head coach for Arizona State. Hopefully they play to win the game. 
Um, Oregon State, they fired Gary Anderson. Uh, well, he resigned, stepped down beginning of October. I had said on the coaching video that they were going to go out and hire Bo Baldwin, current Cal offense coordinator, former Central and Eastern Washington head coach. Well, now Oregon State is going to hire current Washington co-offense coordinator and Oregon State alum Jonathan Smith to be the next head football coach for the Beavers. So Bo, Bo Baldwin will stay at Cal, not going to Oregon State. Maybe he had a change of heart. And Jonathan Smith will be the next head football coach uh, at Oregon State. So those that's an update, I guess, somewhat on the uh, <clears throat> on the coaching carousel that's going on at the, minute, at the moment. Um, and I guess without further ado, I'll get into games this upcoming weekend short list of games as I am only predicting the conference championship games uh, and then at the end of the show here next couple of minutes I will uh, <clears throat> give you my predictions uh, for the college football playoff and what I think is going to happen and what four teams will make the playoff on Sunday and play each other in the semifinal games to potentially play in the national championship in Atlanta uh, on January 8th. Championship weekend this weekend, December 1st is Friday, December 2nd, Saturday, Pac-12 title game uh, in Santa Clara. Levi's Stadium, home of the San Francisco 49ers, will host the Pac-12 title game. Stanford, USC, I think Stanford gets revenge. Uh, USC defeated them week two uh, in uh, in Los Angeles. So I think uh, Stanford, they're playing closer to home uh, than uh than USC is, so I think Stanford, this should be a good game. I will uh, probably, I don't even know if I'll catch the tail end of it. Uh, I'm going to a uh, event uh, on Friday night, WWE NXT. Very excited about that. MAC title game is surprisingly on Saturday this year, normally on a Friday night. Uh, will be played in Detroit, Michigan at Ford Field as usual, though. Akron and Toledo, I gotta take Toledo. American Athletic uh, Conference Championship game in a rematch. Um, Memphis goes to Orlando. Uh, the team in in the conference uh, with the highest uh, winning percentage, uh, the best team in the conference, will host uh, the title game. So Central Florida is hosting it this year due to the fact they went 11 and 0, should have went 12 and 0, but they had a game. Excuse me, get canceled due to the hurricane. Uh, there at the beginning of the year, and then this game was actually rescheduled. They did play it. Central Florida wins, or they won, uh, and I think they'll win again uh, against Memphis, and then I think Mike Norvell, I think he'll be leaving, as I think Scott Frost will be leaving too. So I think uh, still Scott Frost will go to Nebraska, and Mike Norvell will go to uh, Tennessee. Conference USA, same thing with the American Athletic Conference. Their uh, uh, championship game will be played at the home stadium uh, of the team with the highest winning percentage, that being Florida Atlantic. Lane Kiffin's done one hell of a job. That's why his name's coming up again for a couple of these uh, jobs that are open. That's why I said maybe he goes back to Tennessee. We'll see. Uh, I don't I don't think he will. I think he should stay at Florida Atlantic. Uh, but uh, if he decides to go back to Knoxville, that's what he decides to do. More power to him. Florida Atlantic, I think, will win uh, against North Texas. TCU in a rematch against Oklahoma in the Big 12 title game uh, from Arlington, Texas, Dallas area uh, at Jerry World, home of the Dallas Cowboys. TCU will get revenge. Uh, so TCU will win the Big 12. They're currently ranked 11th in the college football playoff rankings. Uh, so if they win and then there's some chaos, you know, do they get in? I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, but I'll get to that here in a minute. SEC, whoever does win this game, though, I think uh, will uh, will be in the playoff between Georgia and Auburn. I think Auburn will win, so I do have Auburn in the playoff. I'll get to the playoff predictions here in a minute, as I said. Rematch of last week, Fresno State and uh, Boise State. Last year, this happened as well. Uh, San Diego State played Wyoming in back-to-back weeks, uh, once at the reg- end of the regular season and then once uh, in the Mountain West Conference Championship game. And this year it happens again. Fresno State goes to Boise. Same thing with uh, the American Athletic Conference and the Conference USA. Uh, The home team with the highest winning percentage will host uh, the conference championship game. So the game will be in Boise, Idaho on the blue turf. 
as this game last week, I believe, was played in Fresno, California. So Boise lost last week to Fresno State. I think they'll get revenge. I think they beat Fresno State. And then the games of the week, well, I shouldn't say games of the week. All these games are good this week. As I said at the beginning of the show, this best conference championship weekend I've seen in quite some time. Uh, I'll do the ACC title game first, and then I'll end. Uh, end. What's that? No. Oh. Lane Kiffin's just trolling everybody on Twitter. Go check him out on Twitter. Um, I'll start with the ACC title game between Miami and Clemson, and I'll end on the Big Ten title game between Ohio State and Wisconsin, and then I'll get into my playoff predictions and tell you, it, well, if you can't tell you know, by who I have winning the games, who I have in my top four, um, you know, just, just hold on a minute there. ACC title, Miami and Clemson and Charlotte uh, for the first time in two years. Uh, after the whole bathroom situation law last year uh, with the transgender and all that other shit that's been going on in this country. Um, Clemson, I think, will win. So Clemson Clemson will beat Miami, Florida. I think whoever does win this game as well will make the playoff. So I think Clemson will win. Uh, and then um, Ohio State and Wisconsin. Uh, I think Ohio State's going to win. I think... I think Wisconsin is going to get beat in a close game. I think Ohio State's better on paper and on the field as well. And I think Ohio State will win and end Wisconsin's undefeated season in Indianapolis. Uh, as Wisconsin, they've been to, I believe, five of the seven Big Ten title games and only won one. So, um, or won two maybe. Yeah, they won two. Um, and because that's when they won went to uh, three straight uh, Rose Bowls. That's that's right. Um, anyways, so as I said, yeah, I have, uh, I have Stanford winning, Toledo winning, Central Florida, Florida Atlantic, TCU, Auburn, Boise State, Clemson, and Ohio State. Now for my playoff predictions. Get my paper out here that I have a merit down on. Um, ACC, I'll start with them. Um, if Clemson wins, whoever wins this game, um, will probably be in the playoff. I think if Clemson does win, they're automatically in, but if Miami wins, I believe they have to beat them pretty bad, maybe blow them out. I don't think it's going to happen. So if Clemson wins, they should be in. No reason why. They're number one right now. Uh, But if Miami wins, I think they've got to blow out Clemson to get into the playoff. SEC, whoever wins is going to be in Auburn or Georgia. I have Auburn. So I have uh, Clemson and Auburn at the moment, uh, 1-2 as they are currently uh, in the rankings. Big 12, if Oklahoma wins, they're in. No reason why they shouldn't be in there. They have one loss to Iowa State. If they lose to TCU, though, in a rematch uh, from a couple weeks ago, and TCU is obviously the Big 12 champs in, I don't think with TCU being 11 with a couple teams ahead of them, Penn State's not playing you got USC if they win the win the Pac-12. Alabama's sitting there at five. I don't think if even if TCU wins, it's going to be enough to jump those teams, even with Alabama and Penn State not playing, uh, for the Big 12 to get into the playoff. So if you're a Big 12 fan, you want into the playoff, you might want to root for Oklahoma this weekend. Uh, I have TCU winning that game, so I don't think the Big 12 will get in. That's as of now, though. By Saturday, I might change my mind. Saturday night, I might change my mind. It just It's going to be hectic. It's going to be chaos again this weekend. There might be a big upset. We'll see. I mean, that's why they play the games. Look at it, look at last weekend. Auburn defeated uh, Alabama at home. No one thought that was going to happen because everybody uh, loves Alabama. And uh, a lot of people hate Alabama, though, too. But everybody seems like they love Alabama. They always want them to win. And, uh, well, they finally lost. So... Big Ten, uh, if Wisconsin wins, they're in, they're undefeated. If they still win the Big Ten title and they don't get in, there's something wrong. They'd be 13-0 and and Big Ten champs. I know they might not have a you know, big win during the regular season, but they would beat the 8th ranked, 8th ranked Ohio State Buckeyes in the Big Ten title game. Um, and if it came down to Ohio State and Alabama, 
uh, if Ohio State would win the Big Ten uh, and be conference champion. Ohio State should be in uh, over Bama because they would be a conference champion with Alabama not playing for the SEC title game this year. But if you remember last year, Ohio State made the playoff over Penn State without winning the conference. If you remember, Penn State defeated them uh, during the regular season, won the East, and won the Big Ten title. Yet Ohio State um, made the playoff, ended up getting shut out 31 nothing to Clemson in the Fiesta Bowl. Um, but, you know, that was last year. This is this year. You know, that's in the past. I could care less. Um, now, does it come back and bite Ohio State in the ass? I don't know. We'll see. Just It's going to depend on, you know, what happens on Saturday. Penn State, as I said, they're ranked ninth in the Pac-12. Uh, whoever wins between Stanford and USC cur- currently ranked uh, 12th and 10th, respectively, uh, I think are out of the running. Uh, there's no way, that's why I said with TCU being ranked 11th, even if they win the Big Ten, Big 12, there's no chance in hell they're, they'll get in, even if something chaotic happens. Because the thing with uh, Alabama and Penn State, they're not even playing, so they're just sitting there waiting for something to happen. Uh, and the thing with the thing with Alabama that a lot of people are going to be getting mad about if it happens, if they get in, is because they're going to say, oh, well, it's Alabama, you can't leave them out even if they lost to Auburn. Well, if if Oklahoma loses and Wisconsin loses, Alabama's going to be in the playoff. I think Oklahoma and Wisconsin do lose. I'm not an Alabama fan, but I, that's how, just how I'm predicting the games this weekend. I think Ohio State's better, and I think uh, TCU's better, and I think they'll get revenge against Oklahoma this upcoming weekend in the Big 12 title game. So my f- final four, my top four for the college football playoff – going into the semifinal games uh, or what I think they should be is Clemson 1 Auburn 2 Alabama 3 because they're sitting there at 5 Oklahoma loses they're going to drop TCU's not going to jump I don't think and then Ohio State uh, sitting there at 4 if Penn State would have been able to uh, go undefeated uh, defeat well if Penn State would have won undefeated and be playing for the Big Ten title game this weekend they'd probably be number 1 uh, but because they were ranked second uh, when they lost to Michigan State or lost to Ohio State, excuse me. Um, but you know that's why they play the games. You know everybody's going to win and everybody's going to lose. It's just a matter of when. And I, I understand that. And you know Penn State's still going to get a get a good bowl game. They're going to be going to a New Year's Six bowl game for the second straight year. Um, you know maybe maybe the Cotton Bowl uh, or the. Uh, or the Peach Bowl or the Orange Bowl, we'll see. Maybe the Fiesta Bowl uh, game they have not lost uh, at all in program history. But Clemson 1, Auburn 2, Alabama 3, Ohio State 4. Because um, Wisconsin's at 4 right now. Ohio State beats them. They're 7-8. At Georgia's going to lose to Auburn, I think. So Georgia will be out. Miami's at 7. They'll be out. Um so then Alabama, you know, they're sitting there at five. They'll they'll sneak in, I think. But that might be a big story uh, because Ohio State, if they do get in, they'd be the first uh, two-loss team uh, to get into the playoff with losses to Oklahoma uh, at home the second weekend of the year and uh, at Iowa uh, back uh, the second weekend or the first weekend in November. Uh, so that's that's my top four. So Clemson will play Ohio State again in a rematch um, and of last year's uh, semifinal game, and the yeah of last year's semifinal game, uh, and then uh, Auburn will get a rematch with uh, Alabama uh, one week uh, one week later. Uh, well, it'll be about a month later. These games are on January 1st, the Rose Bowl and Sugar Bowl. So Clemson's playing Ohio State, I think, and Auburn's playing Alabama, both in rematches uh, in semifinal games. And then the winners of those two games um, will play each other for the national championship. If I had to pick right now, I think I think it'd be uh, I think it'd be a rematch potentially uh, between uh, Clemson and Auburn, a game that happens every year between the Battle of the Tigers. Uh, Clemson defeated Auburn this year. If Clemson, if uh, if Auburn, let me get this out here. If I before I forget, if Auburn loses, they're out because 
and then Georgia would be in because, first off, Auburn would have three losses. There's no chance they'd get in. If if Georgia might be a uh, might come down to Georgia and TCU, then if TCU beats Oklahoma pretty handily, um, TCU having two losses uh, compared to Georgia's one. I believe Georgia only lost one game that was to Auburn, so maybe maybe TCU gets in there. Uh, but I think Clemson, Auburn, Alabama, Ohio State. As of this, Clemson, Auburn national championship. Um, but you know, we'll see. We gotta let these games play out this weekend, and then I'll let everybody know next week uh, what I what I think uh, what I think about everything then, and you know, we'll just go from there. So. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you disliked it. I could care less. Um, follow across the goal line on all social media. Links are down in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'll see everybody next week. And then uh, be sure to go check out the NFL uh, video for this upcoming weekend as well. One, two, three, four. Cowbell, baby. <laughs> Guess what? I got a fever. And the only prescription is more cowbell. <laughs>